Captain's Log, Starlight 192.168.1.26. We have been stranded on this planet for so long now, me and my science officer, Zed Tech. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, Captain. That we have uh, got many, many machines working for us. Honestly, I feel like we can just sit here and kick back. Four, we used to have a copper problem, but look at this. Look at this flow here. The copper was choking our factory. We were running out of... Uh, circuits and from circuits we ran out of everything else and we just we decided we had to put in a little bit of overtime we're, we'll be forwarding the invoices to you high command as i'm sure you'll be aware um i will use my map to come up and have a look at this beautiful new mine site we have opened up here science officer you excelled yourself building this it has to be said <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's really good yet because um hmm. Well, I would it, still change uh, the uh, input uh, to have chests on either end. Chests? Ah, uh, okay, yeah. To to because at the moment we got one set of chests to uh, output to the two sets of outputs. It'd be nice to have that on both sides. To be fair, I think I think our basic design of train station could probably use some work anyway. Uh, but we we have a working the uh, working model, and that is good enough for us. Now, we both have a, a little list of jobs that need to be done. I say we both have. I, I have my one singular item list that needs to be done. Uh, and I'm sure you being science officer have many, many other things that need to be done. I've turned my uh, my overlay off. People people will not be happy with that. Um, oh, look. Our train station is being fed by the coal here. I, I didn't remember that being set up, but that's beautiful. Oh, speaking of which, we also need to set up a coal station for the bottom iron train before they ran out or of the iron train ah yes i see it down here yeah yeah uh, well i might leave that in your capable hands as i uh trek my way down to the end of the belt because uh we are short of robo ports it seems to be the one thing that we always need but never have um so i thought i would take it on on my shoulders as the the, the amazing captain the person in charge the man with the responsibility to go on and fix this problem that we've had for some time now. Oh, science officer, I fear we have a bit of an issue. Uh, what I've, is the issue? I've come down to the end of the buffer, uh, the end of the, the bus, to see if I can build these robo-ports. And the the wall, the wall is right here. I, I didn't think we would see the day where we completely run out of space. Uh, we could turn the buff, the bus, but I feel like it kind of, that I don't know, that makes me feel dirty uh. to even suggest that. <laughs> I would just continue through. I mean, there are two more lakes. Well, there's a giant lake ahead. Indeed, indeed. I'm worried about the natives that seem to be uh, sniffing at our borders around here. Oh, uh, are they actually coming for us already? Oh, I have a solution. <laughs> do you? Ah, oh, I do like native solutions. But it's not really a native solution. <laughs> and as the sun sets and the lights come on, science officer, I have to ask you, have you ever seen such majestic colours in your life? I never thought during my entire time, looking at that sky, looking at that sunset, that I would see a brand new colour. Oh, it's so, so magnificent. We should have to get back and make a report of this to High Command. Well, in fact, I am making reports to High Command literally as we speak. But, mm, blown away by the colours of that sunset. What colours? <laughs> Look to the sky! Dark? <laughs> it is I... dark now. It is dark now. I think the most efficient train on this line is the stone train. Never moves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just, just does everything it needs to. It, it's uh, by far, as you say, the most efficient. Oh, here comes an iron train in. Ah, oh, and you've sorted out the refueling station. Beautiful, yeah. science officer, beautiful. I love just watching, like, all the uh, the ore flow out into the <laughs> machines and all the different uh, furnaces lighting up in order. We seem to have a central bias. I suppose that's because there's, like, less conveyor belt going into there. Maybe we need to do some weird stuff like uh, snake the belt back and forth so they all arrive at the same time and we can watch the whole furnace array just kind of light up top to bottom. But that might be getting a little bit too far. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Captain. It does seem to me like it's... Uh, um, what, what do you call those, actually? I, um, it's not oh, the graphic diagram. equalizers the, for the, yeah, for for the, the sound music. levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, no, that is... That is <laughs> it's gone full volume, and then later on it will turn down again. <laughs> and it starts from the middle and slowly builds up Looks everywhere. Out. Oh yeah, uh, I'm giving you the solution for our problem. 
tanks. Oh, <laughs> what a great piece of military history we should uh, be working with right there. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have explosive shells, regular shells that require plastic. Well, uh, explosive shells. The difference between an explosives and the regular shells is the amount of explosives needed. <laughs> well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Do we have explosives being made? I believe we needed some for some things. So uh, I would be surprised if we have none. I'm not sure. I, I know grenades should use it, but they're not. Yeah, you would expect grenades to be using it, right? Um, but then at the same time... Grenades are like a, a contained combustion rather than a, a detonation, if you will. I know it's a bit... Is, is it called a conf conflagration? Is where where it... Uh, it, it yeah, well, no, it burns quickly without, like, exploding, if you see what I'm saying. Um, I believe that's the difference between, like, black powder and TNT. But, you know, these are the ancient relics of a past time that no one uses anymore. It's all, it's all about new, neutronium split, uh, fusion nowadays. Uh, there's copper on the, well, copper ore on a copper belt at the battery facility. And it, the last two have stopped because they can't get copper plates. Oh, how has that worked out? I'm sure it's my fault somewhere along the line. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna argue with that. <laughs> we have a lot of steel. We have iron production at peak. Copper production could be sped up by adding more um, furnaces. That's what the only we need, more furnaces for the copper production. More furnaces for copper, okay, that's that's a copy and paste job right there, that's nice and yeah. easy. Oh, thanks, Reddy. Oh man, that that was quick, I've not even managed to get the steel down from, uh, from up here, wow. <laughs> that was very quick. You can probably make a tank on your person, it's not, well, it only needs electric engines. Which that's... I just happen to be right next to the production line of, look at that, beautiful. Yeah. You, you do need oh, no, shells. No, nor normal engines, not electric. Uh, oh, that yeah, that's electric units. Like electric engines need lubrication for some reason. Why wouldn't it go the other way around? Yeah, you would imagine the other ones need lubricate. Well, I, I don't know. I suppose the uh, the Both normal need lubrications. Engines... Oh, do they need lubrication as well? Okay. Oh, no, I... no, no, normal engines don't. But I'm just thinking, shouldn't both need lubrication? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, moving parts in, in everything. That's yeah. Okay, I finally got enough stuff together to make a tank. Do we have any explosive shells? That's the question. No, we haven't made it. We just researched them. Okay, we're gonna have to build a nice little area for for that. Coal, sort of stuff. sulfur, and sulfur and water to make two explosives. That's what we need. Coal, uh, sulfur, and water to make two explosives. That's okay. where we make batteries. That's the best place to make it to them place to put those but that will do right i finally have the robo ports out and in the logistics network nice that's nice well i say they're out we're we're, we're waiting to make one uh, we can't quite shift the gears in at the right pace okay i thought i would need to double up on the steel input because they're long handled inserts but it turns out we need to double up on that okay that should help okay robo ports done captain away <laughs> yeah. this is gonna be hard to set up <laughs> it's the name of the game at the moment, right? Um, okay, coal, so sulfur, water in these. Did, did did I make a chemical plant production facility anywhere? It seems like something I should have done. Um, so down down the far end of the bus, <laughs> we appear okay. to have quite a serious resource issue. Um, even though the train, the iron train is quite regularly coming in and dumping down all the iron, by the time we get down to the red circuits portion of the bus, all the iron plates have disappeared. They, they've all <laughs> just gone. Every single one of them. Uh, the thing is, it's not a problem, about, it, it's a problem about inputting ore, because the smelter is not constantly on. I mean, everything's on yellow belts down at this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think I might see a quick and easy way of upgrading. Let's 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 try and get on that one. <laughs> okay, I am down at the iron train station, and I'm hoping by the upgrade of these yellow parts to red parts, we should be able to get some stuff flowing a little bit quicker. I have no idea whether this is actually going to turn out like that, but I do note that we are limited by the belts. You can see how the uh, the boxes are still empty, so yeah, we'll have to see if this will help. 
I, I, I would like to talk about a, a moment in, in past history that maybe you're, you're not aware of, science officer. Obviously, as a, as a past historian, um, I, I would uh, always like to share my knowledge with those less, less able than myself in the historic arts. Uh, and I would like to talk to you about the, uh, the ecological movement that happened roughly in the 22nd century. You see, people of the past, they realised they were spending a lot of time um, allocating... Sorry, they were spending a lot of space allocated in their house to certain things that weren't done anymore. Well, for instance, and I know as, as crazy as this sounds, but people used to uh, contain small combustion chambers in their, in their own houses... Uh, to to heat the the building up, I, and I know that sounds crazy. Who who would ever do that? I mean, why why don't they have the uh, the dark energy pipeline coming in and keeping their building warm for them? I I, I never understand. But they 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 didn't have these technologies, and so they uh, had to to do these things. Now later on, when the the, the dark energy harnessing technologies came around, uh, people were left with all these all these empty voids in the house. There there was this thing called a chimney. Now I'm not sure if you're you're too aware of the concept. It's kind of like a an exhaust vent for a fire. I know that's a bit weird. I know that's a bit weird. But people had these in their houses. Now it sounds incredibly industrial to me, and all I can think of the people with like living in warehouses or factories or something like this. I mean, when was the last time you actually saw an open fire, science officer? Uh on this planet when we crashed and made furnaces. Hey, those furnaces were great. They kept us kept us going with food. But yeah, you you're right. But there we go. Only in the most extreme circumstances. Look at the uh look at the iron flow that's good. Only in the most extreme circumstances do we have to fall back on open flame. Like look at look at this place. It's uh this is this is now like all electronic flame as people of the past uh work towards. So, there was a, a movement because um, as, as, as I'm sure you're aware, before everybody was uh, part of this hyper-connected government, governmental system that we now have, uh, people had to like be made aware of topics instead of just knowing about them. Uh, I, I know that's a bit bit strange as well. Um, so there were people okay. going around talking about the uh, the death of the ecology around them. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure you've heard about the sixth mass extinction that humans themselves caused. Uh, it's fairly non-controversial now, uh, but at the time people were not 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 so aware. So people had to go around and tell them these things were happening, and they were made this suggestion that maybe, just maybe, we could give over chimney spaces to our local wildlife. Uh, this was all good until the baboon invasion of 2304, uh, where baboons started uh, taking over the American subcontinent and uh, uh, living in people's chimneys. Of course, leading oh. to the statewide chimney ban. Uh, which some people say is responsible for the state of decay that we find ourselves in today. We are in the state of decay. We, I mean, look at this place. Look at this place. Where are the gleaming skyscrapers? Uh, back on yeah, Earth. Yeah, yeah. Look at how we find ourselves here in this state that I hereby call decay. Um, well, we are working hard. We Captain. are working I mean, hard, we, but we, imagine how much less hard we would have to have to work if it. Was it for those baboons? <laughs> I I guess. I mean, um, these guys taking all the things that I asked for. Look at these robots. They're just running away with them. <laughs> Give them back. Give them here. I want them. <laughs> <laughs> Captain and his own personal problems. <laughs> Where are they actually going? <laughs> they are the things I've ordered. <laughs> they to recharge, or you probably left the area. Oh, am I? No, no, no! I'm, I'm, I'm logisticized. You're logisticized. <laughs> that sounds wrong. At some <laughs> levels. Oh, 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 they've all got this far and decided they need to turn back. Going to charge up down here. I, I, I quite enjoy what just watching the robot behavior, trying to figure out what's going so, on. So, okay, Captain. I mean, I understand that the ban was there for a reason. Yes, yes, and. Uh, Interesting. So, ch they used chimneys to basically get smoke out of their house. Yes, right? yeah, yeah. The smoke. These are these exhaust gases that come from combustion. Uh, I I don't know much about it myself. I'm I'm not a chemist, but uh, <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's it's just what I've been told in in my my archaeological studies. Uh, you you find structures fallen over inside old uh, old building sites. Uh, but dating back from the the 1900s or something like that, and they they all have this 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 giant void space inside them. You 
could use it for something else. Yeah, well, this is this is it. This is what um, Anne Free Godfried uh, decided to bring to to the people's uh, attention. Um, though she she was trying to do it for animal rights, and of course, I now put the question to you, science officer: What else would you do with void spaces in people's homes? I kind of. Feel I mean, some sort of server network would be useful. Every, every home could do with some computing substrate. Wait, what's this, what's this bit doing? I here? don't know. Uh, that was old iron. I, I think. might, I might pick input. this up. I need the red belt. I really do like the green that we made this train. Very nice. Uh, the problem with the server and putting a computer in such a place, I'm assuming that the place was made for, for with thermal insulation in mind. Ah, oh, indeed, indeed. So you would need to run some sort of cooling along the inside edge. But I suppose that does leave it isolated from uh, outside environmental issues. Uh, if if your Wait, local volcano yes. has decided to, uh, to, to, to do, do an angry, um, it, it would be nicely isolated in the chimney. I guess, I guess. Um, strange, what would you do with the chimney? Hmm. I mean, I've, I've heard of people... A place for launching fireworks? Sorry? For launching fireworks, of course. A nice nice straight launch structure to go from. I, I like that indeed. like that indeed. Oh, man, I'm having to wait at the junction. What's going on? Iron train? Still struggling. <laughs> so I've heard of people uh, replacing one side with glass because, of course, the chimney... Uh, would because they were trying to use it to keep warm mainly ran on the uh, the very inside of the building so if you replace one of the walls with glass you would have um, a floor to two ceilings high uh, aquarium which I think is a very nice idea uh, save those tropical fish that went extinct or that were on the verge oh. of extinction of course uh, my my favorite fish are the ones we've created ourselves the uh, the UV fish uh, they they are the best. Because who doesn't like a fish that glows in UV when it's a uh, friend? It could be argued that uh, a chimney, yeah, a chimney would be could be used as an aquarium. Yeah, nice and uh, vertical. It's like the uh, like the continental shelves, just like the continental shelf. Uh, the other other question, of course, is what void spaces do you think exist in today's home that we could take advantage of and make better? Showers? Showers, of course. Now that all we need to do is walk in the nano cleanser, do we truly need all that space for our shower? The biggest void space on Earth was were the rainforest, no, weren't they? Yeah, the, the, the wonders of the rainforest, where all the, the rain of the world was produced. Earth, of course, now famously a uh, desert planet. Um, and there's due almost entirely to the... Uh, to, they call it deforestation of the rainforest. Uh, now, I'm not sure what the age-old folk hero Forrest Gump has to do with it, but if uh, if he has been removed, obviously bad things do happen. Forests aren't really that important because a lot of actual oxygen is produced by small critters in the water, like plankton. Of course, yeah, plankton and the uh, the, the pseudo-plankton we, we created after the, after the great plankton famine of uh, 2402. It's always a famine, or an invasion, or a war. <laughs> Interesting thing, human history. Uh, it's cyclical, you know. <laughs> and now have all this running as fast as possible, which means we're probably going to run out of iron sometime soon. The the choke point is how much iron is arriving at the, at the load station. No, the belts are not full, yeah. so... I can't do much better than what we've got. Hmm. So, time to turn to the map and look for iron. Oh, we know where the iron is. Iron's just there. Okay. Get in the car and roll on up there. So, Captain, what did you decide about the expansion of the main bus? Oh uh, yeah, we're just we we're just going to punch through the wall, um, make a make a weird little offshoot. We can make a tank, and we can make all of the necessary things for pacification of the nation. Yes, we we need to set up um, an ammo production facility for the for the tank. Yes, we could. Um, and given my extensive ordnance training. Uh, I think all we need are explosive cannon shells. I don't think we'll ever come into a situation where we just want the normal ones. 